The Call of Samuel. <laughs> what a great story. And, and this is one of the better known stories of the entire Bible. Back in the book of Judges, I took some time to explain the timetable and how many stories kind of fit together. And in doing so, I reached into 1 Samuel, this story here, and pulled it back so that you can see how it fits in with the other stories of Judges. Now that we're here in 1 Samuel, I want to do the same thing. I want to reach back into Judges and again have a little bit of a review on how this fits together. In the book of Judges, it talked about a time of peace that lasted for 53 years. A good time in Israel. Well, the last 20 years of that time, uh, there was a judge by the name of Jair that oversaw the people. He was a good man, and he kept the peace, and uh, he helped lead people in the, in the ways of God. Also, the high priest at that time was Eli. Well, at the end of that time, uh, uh, Jair died, and uh, Eli's two sons were became corrupt, and it threw the whole nation into a time of apostasy. Those sons were so corrupt that even though the people were sinful and following their idols, they still called what the sons did scandalous. It was pretty bad. It was a dark time in Israel, but several Tremendous things happen during that time. The first, of which, the first of which doesn't sound terribly tremendous in the fact that the uh, brothers of Jephthah kicked him out and he went out and became a leader of some thugs. It was during this time that a, a couple of the tribe of Dan couldn't have children. Suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared to them and told them that they were going to have a son. They were to call his name Samson. And then the, the story here, where Hannah couldn't have a child, and she goes to the tabernacle, pleads with God. God answers her prayer, and Samuel is born. It happened right here, near the birth of Samson. But also, it was during this time that a young girl of Moab, came with her mother-in-law to Israel, and there Ruth met Boaz, and they were married. And during this time right here, near the end, they had a son by the name of Obed. Well, at the end of that time period, uh, some fantastic things happen, some drastic things happen, and it starts a time of revival. Up in the north, up in the northeast, uh, the Ammonites are taken over, and so the Israelites pull in Jephthah from exile, and he leads the army to victory. In the southwest, Samson becomes the judge of that area. Eli is now dead, and, and, and Samuel is traveling around the country as a, as a voice for righteousness. And the family of Ruth continues on. Oban is growing up during this time, ready to have a family of his own. In, to look at the story, we see that uh, Elkanah had two wives. Now that, that was allowed. That, there was nothing illegal about that, but it wasn't a general practice. The main reason why is the fact that <laughs> Well, people couldn't afford to have two families on one salary. And so, cost, so it wasn't very common. There were several reasons why a man may have more than one wife. Uh, two of them uh, boil down to the fact, one is that you have certain rural groups uh, or, or even nomadic groups that 
want to keep all their workforce in, in, in close. So if they happen to have more women than men, they didn't want these women being married off to other families. So the men of their clan would marry more than one wife to keep their workforce in there. That's probably not true in this case here. More than likely, uh, Elkanah was wealthy. Could, could afford it. We see that a little bit by the offering that he gives. It's a, it's a very generous offering. Uh, and I've always wondered, you may not have thought about this, but I have in this story. It, it, it refers to the tabernacle and the, te and the temple. Well, we know that the temple was built years later by Solomon. And so, that, so this couldn't be that temple. But also, it's referred to as a tabernacle, which was a tent of meetings. What we get from this is that this tabernacle was here long enough so that a temporary structure was built around it, or it was placed in a structure that was already there, because it refers to, one, it refers to as a temple, but also refers to it as having doors. So we feel that even though it's still a tabernacle, it's probably in a building of some sort. Well, Elkanah says to Hannah that I'm, I'm worth ten sons to you. Well, that wasn't much comfort to Hannah. No, there was a certain social stigma that accompanying women who couldn't have children. That was a pressure. And the other wife constantly made her jealous and kept pointing this thing out. But also there was a, in that day and age, the, especially the women felt responsible for the future of the family, especially the future of their husband's name. And Hannah here could not contribute to that at all. But, there's also the area of the fact that a woman's security was, was more secure if there was a son, if she had a son. If her husband died, it was up to her son to, to care for her. Uh, his other wife wasn't going to do that, and her children weren't going to do that. It, it, it was best if she had her own children to care for her in her old age, in case her husband died. Well, Samuel and Samson have several things in common. One, they're born about the same time, but also they both have the vow of the Nazarite on their life. We don't think of it so much as far as Samuel's concerned. He did, but we think of Samson because he kept violating that vow. Both of these men were powerful men in different ways. Uh, Samson in his strength, but Samuel in the strength of his character was a powerful man. Well, when Samuel is woken up during the night, God gives him a promise. He says, I'm going to bring something about. I'm going to judge Eli. Something's going to happen that will, uh, that everyone who hears about it will shudder. Another translation says, those who hear about it, their ears will, t will, 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 will tingle. Uh, well, what happens is actually the next two stories. As we anticipate those stories, we see that God is giving this to Eli on the dark side. You see, it's like a cloud. It's dark on one side and bright on the other. And at this point, God is referring to the dark side of the cloud that it's a devastating time. It will shake everybody up. On the bright side, this same event will start a revival that will last for years and eventually bring in King David. So, come back when we give you insights on one of those two stories.